In the previous video, we made a hub for the front wheel of a bicycle. This hub is going to have two configurations, and for this video, we're going to add the second configuration that allowed this hub to be used on a rear wheel. When we made the front hub configuration, we skipped over several steps that we will go back and make in order to create the rear wheel configuration. The front hub has a simple shell that covers the bearings that support the axle that pass through the hole in the hub. The rear hub replaces this bearing shell with a structure that has three steps. Two of the steps have threads added to them. This portion of the hub is identical between the front and rear hub. When you completed the front hub, you had a feature tree that looked like this, and we had a gap between step 11 and step 18, and step 19, and step 21. Now it's time to go and switch to our rear hub configuration, which was created at the beginning of the first tutorial. When we click on this configuration, we see that everything disappears. When we go back to the feature tree, we see that all the features in the tree are suppressed. All we have to do is hold down our shift key, click on the first feature in the tree, and the last feature, which will highlight all the features in between, and then click on unsuppress. Now we'll unsuppress all the features, and now what we want to do is go back and suppress some key features that will not be used for this particular configuration. That will be the shell for the bearing, this fillet, and this outside fillet. Probably what will happen is some other features will automatically suppress as a result. So we will suppress this feature first, We see that steps 9, 10, 11, and 19 have automatically suppressed also because they can't exist without step 9, the bearing shell. Now what we want to do is roll back the feature tree to a time before this hole is placed through the hub. That comes right before step 18. Now we see the mirror is gone and any features related to the hole or the bearing shell are gone also. Now I've reloaded this file that includes steps 12 through 17 and I'm going to just roll forward on each of these to show how they're created. First step will be to add this revolves series of steps. These two steps which will have threads added to it and this will allow the sprocket and the lock ring to thread on to the hub. Rolling back again to see how that's created. I'll make my sketches visible. And we're going to be using this sketch in red, which is just for making the rear bearing shell. On the right plane, make a new sketch. And we're going to be copying most of these lines from this sketch. But what we're going to do is not use this line or this line. We're actually going to use the base of these little triangles here. These represent the teeth that are going to be glued onto those steps after we get done revolving this step section. So I'm going to convert entities on this line, this line, this line. And instead of this one, I'm going to choose this line here, and this line here, this one. And I'm going to zoom in. We have just one line here. And finally, the check mark. I'm going to hide everything again so we can see what's going on. I'm just going to stretch these lines. I'll turn everything back on again so you can see what's happening. Trim. See what we've got now is a series of steps that exclude this outer edge where the tips of the threads are going to be once they're added. So instead, we're going to make the steps go to the base of the threads, which are these triangles. We need to make sure we have a line connecting this across here. And it looks like I can drag that to be on the safe side. I'm going to add a relation to my main axis. that collinear and now we can revolve this choosing this as our revolve line 
Now we've added our rear bearing shell, which is a series of steps. And that is step 12 in the example file. Step 13 is to glue on one screw thread onto the smaller diameter step. Rolling back again, I'll show how that was created. Showing my sketches, we'll make a new sketch on the right plane. All we have to do is copy this triangular form using convert entities. And we will revolve this around the axis, which was made in step two. That completes that step. Now what we want to do is pattern this in this direction. We'll just try to add as many threads as we can until we run into this step. Choosing linear pattern, choosing our main axis as the direction we're going to pattern in. The feature we will choose is the screw thread we just made. I'm going to reverse the direction. And I happen to know that the width of the base of the thread is one millimeter, so I want the spacing of the threads to be one millimeter apart. Right now this is set to four. If I set it to five, I can get one more full thread in there and I will leave a gap between the thread and this shoulder here. That completes step 14. So this series of threads is the threads used for screwing on the lock ring. We now need to add the threads for screwing on the sprocket. Same process as before. We're just going to copy the triangle shape that represents the tooth and revolve it around the axis. Rolling back to show how that's done. Showing my sketches again. On the right plane, make a new sketch and copy these three elements into it. And again, revolve about the axis. And that completes step 15. Just like before, we want to pattern these threads on this step here. Rolling back to demonstrate that. Go with linear pattern. And the axis I want to use is the one created back in step two. The feature will be the thread we just created. I'm going to reverse the direction here. And just like before, five threads can fit in before they get to the shoulder. So we will leave a gap here between the last thread and this shoulder here. That completes step 16. And step 17 is nothing more than a fillet added here to blend between this step and the face of the flange. So I've just rolled that forward to show it to you. And because we inserted all these features before the axle hole revolve cut, now that I roll forward again to that feature, I should see now that this hole will be cutting into our new shell instead of the old one. So that automatically comes for free. I'm rolling past step 19, which is a feature part of the front hub. Step 20 is simply to add a fillet onto this edge of the hole. Now I can just roll the rest of the features forward without doing anything else. I've got the completed hub for the rear. Now if I've done everything correctly, I should be able to go back to my configurations tab and toggle between the front hub and the rear hub. And we notice the only things changing are in the bearing shell area and the flanges and the actual shell and the position of the holes remains unchanged. The last thing I might want to do is organize some of the features that belong to one configuration or the other. You see these suppressed features here are part of the front hub. So I can right click on here, add a new folder, and type in front hub features. Open that up and just drag these steps into there. We know that these features, 12 through 17, are solely for the rear hub. 
So I can right click on that, add to new folder, rear hub features, open that up, and just drag these features into the folder. As long as you don't change the order of them, it won't change the behavior of the feature tree. And that concludes making the rear configuration of the hub.